Have you ever used constraints in your Blender projects? In this video, I want to show you a few cool things you can do with them. Let's go! In the first example, I want to show you how you can set the camera to always follow this blue character. To do this, select the camera and go to the constraints menu. Look for the track 2 constraint and select the character as the target. As you can see, the camera now always points at the object, no matter where I move it. Another practical use case for this technique are spotlights. Also add a track 2 constraint to it and set it to follow the character. Now the light always shines at the selected model. The same thing also works when moving the character instead of the light or the camera. There's also another way to make a light follow an object. This time I am going to use the copy location constraint. I disable the Z axis so that the light stays on top of the character. Now you can move him around and the light will always follow. Next, I want to show you how to rig gears. The goal is that I only have to rotate one gear and the other one follows accordingly. To do so, I add a copy rotation constraint to the second gear and disable the X and Y axis. Now the gear follows the rotation of the first object However, it is going in the wrong direction. To fix this, I invert the Z-axis. This is now solved, but we have another issue. The two objects are overlapping. Select one of them, enter edit mode and rotate it until it fits. Now everything should work. If you want to add more gears, you can simply duplicate the second one and set its target. In this example, we have a nice candle with a flame. The problem is that the flame is an image projected on a plane and it only looks good if you look at it from the front. A simple solution is to add a track 2 constraint and set it to follow the camera. If the plane rotates in a weird way, you might have to change the axis in the constraint menu. Now the flame follows the camera, but this isn't really what we want. It should rotate only along the Z-axis. To achieve this, add a limit rotation constraint and restrict the X and Y axis. The plane now rotates correctly and we don't have to worry about it anymore. That's it for this video. Those are just a few examples of the amazing things you can do with constraints. 
I want to encourage you to play around with them and find creative ways to use them for your own purposes. Thank you for watching, see you in the next one.